Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Cybersecurity Meg, and I'm also really happy that you're here. Today, I'm gonna to be speaking a little bit about how I managed to become a fully certified CISSP at just 24 years old. Forgive me if you see me staring at my phone because I do have my notes in a timeline kind of mapped out. That way I can just keep on track and keep focused to the topic at hand. But nonetheless, let's get into it. So essentially this video is going to overview my own personal path and how I acquired the CISSP. That doesn't necessitate that you need to follow the same path or that anyone else has followed the same path. Of course, there are hundreds of thousands of different ways that you can acquire your CISSP. And I'm sure if you're watching this video, you're probably looking into getting a CISSP or you already have your CISSP. So if you're the former, maybe you don't know that in order to acquire your CISSP, you have to have at least five years of experience so that you can actually qualify to get the certification. If you don't have five years worth of experience, you can become what's called an associate of ISC squared. And then once you hit that five year mark, you become the fully uh, certified CISSP and you receive the full fledged certification. So me, myself, at 24, I was able to acquire the completely full-fledged CISSP certification. And here's a bit about my background and how I managed to do so. One thing to keep in mind is that to count towards the five years of experience of getting the CISSP, one of those years you can substitute. If you don't have on-the-job experience, you can use your education. So for me, I have a BS in a non-IT related field, and then I also have a Master of Science in Cybersecurity. So I was able to use my Master of Science in Cybersecurity to account for one year, and that kind of helped me being so young. Now, of course, if you've been working in IT or cybersecurity for a decade or some extraneous amount of time, you're not going to have to worry about substituting any of the years of experience for education. I'm simply just bringing out the topic so you're aware of it. So like I mentioned, I got my Master of Science in Cybersecurity. I believe I acquired that in, it was, oh, okay. <laughs> it was August of 2019. I began the program in the winter of 2017. So it took me roughly about a year and a half. I did do an accelerated program online where I Constantly was taking classes. I didn't take any breaks. I went to summer school, blah, blah, blah. I just kind of wanted to get it done. I plan in the future to do an entire video that covers the value of getting a degree in cybersecurity. If I feel it's been worth it, the pros, cons, the effort, the, the money, etc. So stay tuned for that. So that's how I got my first year of experience to qualify towards the CISSP. My second year of experience was in pre-sales engineering for the Azure Cloud. I worked as a pre-sales engineer for cloud, helping people determine how much storage they need, uh, how much bandwidth they need, blah, blah, blah. Basically, if you go to the Azure Resource Calculator, that's what they used to call it several years ago. Probably it's been updated since, but I would help people determine this. And uh, probably you're familiar that when you are submitting your experience to get the CISSP, your experience has to cover at least two domains out of the total eight. So my domains with this, it covered four or five of them. I was helping people with security, the E3, uh, security licensing, different um, choices for like Azure security for AD, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Kerberos, what have you. So that was obviously present covering several domains. And then, like I said, just general pre-sales engineering work, helping people build out how they want to migrate from on-premises to the cloud. So I did that for exactly one year. And that brings me to two total years of experience. So then where did the other three come from? <laughs> Well, the other three come from what I've been doing for the last three years, which is working directly in cybersecurity. When I first started in cybersecurity, I was hired as an associate cybersecurity analyst. And I mean, I was doing a lot of things, a lot of uh, SecOps work, obviously, as an analyst, you know, phishing emails, antivirus, DLP, what have you, if you can name it, probably I was touching it, Caspi, all these different things. So I was an associate cybersecurity analyst for 
about a year and a half, and then I promoted to a normal cybersecurity analyst, basically just dropped the associate title, and that's when I started doing a lot of the similar things that I was doing, but I picked up a ton of incident response, I picked up SAP security and monitorization, uh, some more advanced things that require more critical thinking as opposed to kind of like being able to just automate my thought process on how something works. Of course, in SecOps, you're going to have a lot of playbooks, so everything's kind of like, do it this way. And then the higher up you go, of course, the more depth you're getting into topics. So then you really have to sit there and try to resolve the issue as efficiently, cost effectively, and securely for everyone. So, and that was my case. And I did cybersecurity analyst work for uh, another year and a half. And then just recently in September of 2020, so about two months ago at the time of making this video, I got a promotion to be the Cybersecurity Incident Response Manager. And I'll note that when I was an Associate Cybersecurity Analyst and a Normal Cybersecurity Analyst, I was doing a lot of incident response work. I enjoyed it. It's my favorite. <laughs> I love the adrenaline rush of it. I love not knowing what's going to happen or when it's going to happen. I love having to resolve something, working under pressure. It's fun, exciting. Maybe I'm a little bit weird. I don't know. Probably most security professionals can concur with me. I find that stuff, malware, what have you, exciting, and I like working with it. I always find that when I'm put under pressure and when I'm faced with a new challenge, that's when I learn the most. That's when I find out about the newest tools or what's going on in the world or the newest strains of malware or whatever. So I really enjoy that. And then uh, that accounts for three years. So about a year and a half as an associate cybersecurity analyst, a year and a half as a normal cybersecurity analyst. And then I've also been working now, obviously, as a cybersecurity incident response manager. So that is a little bit over three years. And then total, this is five years, including the education. So that's how I acquired my own five years to submit my experience for the CISSP. Now, that just kind of touches on the experience part of how I got it. I will, in the future, make very detailed videos about my study plan for the CISSP. I firmly believe that in order to be successful in any certification, that it's extremely helpful to have a study plan laid out that tells you exactly when you should know something, by what date, how well you should know it, uh, pretty much all of that. I like having a guideline to follow so I know exactly when I'm on track and when I'm veering off track. That way I can kind of keep myself well oriented and organized. So to get my CISSP at 24, I already covered the experience part, but now I'll cover kind of the certification part in terms of studying. So I started off by getting my Security Plus in late June of 2020, like the last week of June 2020. And that was my first ever cybersecurity certification. I'd never taken one before, so I had no idea what to expect. I overprepared for that certification like no other. I was so nervous for it. <laughs> I'd read so many things on Reddit, on YouTube, wherever, on Google, of people failing left and right and people were struggling. So I just went ham on it and I completely overprepared, which is fine by me. I learned so much and I'd much rather be overprepared for something than be underprepared. I passed with like an 840 something out of 900, so really, you know, scored pretty decently. And that's kind of when I found Certification Station, the Discord server. And I just kind of stumbled upon the Discord server and saw a lot of people on the server who were chatting about the CISSP, and I was extremely intrigued. I never thought to myself, oh, I'm going to go get my CISSP. In my brain, I always thought, I'm too young, I can't do it, like, it's this huge certification that covers so much, and I don't have the knowledge for it, I'm not prepared, blah, blah, blah. But then I started really chatting with a lot of the people on the server and they encouraged me and showed me that I was capable of acquiring or achieving the certification so long as I was willing to put in the work. That's a whole nother topic, but I am a um, very, very heavy supporter of you can do whatever you want so long as you're willing to put in the hard work. 
So after speaking to all these people on the server, they supported me, they encouraged me, they were like, hey, go for it. And that's when I really seriously took up studying for the CISSP. So probably um, a couple weeks into July of 2020, I started seriously studying for the CISSP. I had to wait for my books to come in from Amazon. I live in Europe now, I don't live in the US, so delivery of things is a little bit slower here, especially during coronavirus. So I waited for the books to come in, I got my resources, I started studying, and then I got really sick. I didn't have the coronavirus, thank gosh, but for about a week and a half, I couldn't do any studying. I was just, all I could do was lay on the couch. I just was really, really sick, and that derailed my studying a little bit, but because I had that support group on Discord, they continuously encouraged me, and they're like, hey, this is just a minor setback, you still need to go for it. And at that time, I'd already scheduled my exam for September 23rd, so I just kept going, kept pushing, spent as much time as I could in a healthy manner, studying, discussing topics with Discord members, with my colleagues, what have you. And then on September 23rd, I went to the exam center, I took the exam, I felt like I was failing throughout the exam, which apparently is a shared sentiment among many people who have passed the CISSP. My exam stopped at 100 questions. I walked over to the proctor to get my sheet that was printed out. I saw the word congratulations as the first thing on the screen and I was like, oh my gosh, no way. And yeah, it was one of the happiest, most exciting moments of my life. Certainly during this pandemic, all of us are experiencing enough crappy times and ill feelings and mental health is down so having the time to actually sit down and prepare myself for the CISSP and then to go and pass it at 24 years old it was such a confidence booster for me that's not to say that if you pass the exam at 70 it's any less of recognition that's still freaking fantastic I just personally wanted to get it out of the way, get it done quicker, and now I don't have to worry about it when I have kids in the future if I ever decide to have kids. Right now I have a bit more of a laid-back uh, lifestyle and I don't have so many commitments. So for me it worked to get it done at this age, but I know certainly for many people it's much better and they'll have a much stronger foundation to take the test when they're in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and that's perfectly fine too. So overall, if I account for the time of studying for CISSP, it was roughly three months. And I say three months because I account for the time that I was studying for my Security Plus as time spent studying for the CISSP. Why? Because the Security F Plus was, for me personally, a way to solidify my foundational knowledge and the skill set that I felt was necessary before approaching the CISSP. That's just me though, I only have three and some odd weeks, uh, three years and some odd weeks in cybersecurity directly, so of course if you have many, many years and you're much older, probably you don't need to take the Security Plus and you can go straight for the CISP. That's just my path. So yeah, that's how I became a fully certified CISSP at the age of 24. I have quite a few more videos to come. Like I said, I'm going to be posting about my study schedule, the best resources that I use to get the CISSP, how I got my Security Plus, how I studied for it. I'll also be discussing a lot of topics like what it's like to be a female working in cybersecurity, whether or not having a master's degree in cybersecurity is worth it. So. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you learned something, and if you liked, then please like the video, comment down below because I'd love to hear from you, and subscribe. Ciao!